So um, uh, we're still talking about writing, and it's actually it's an area that I'm really passionate about. Uh, and, and of course, it, it, it is an area that has got a lot of challenges and a, a lot of achievements at, at the same time in terms of research and in terms of uh, classroom practice. So uh, what I'm going to do in this presentation, I'm going to share with you some of my concerns. And I'm also going to share with you um, some of the hacks and activities and tools that I have tried with my students. And they have some to some extent worked with me. Uh, and 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 of course we shouldn't forget the element of fun. So I'll, I'll, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk about that as well. So sort of com combining education with having um, some kind of um, fun um, inside the classroom. So um, what we're going to cover today, we're going to look at the nature of writing itself and, and what makes it what makes it a difficult skill for the students. And, and the challenges that they, they, they face when, when they are practicing and learning writing. And we're going to also look at the sources of these challenges. And um, also, as I said, I'm going to share, sorry, uh, some hacks and activities uh, with, with you. And uh, also technology. Um, I've, I've been following very keenly uh, Dr. Uh, Ala Amijashi, and you know, she, she did suggest some of the technical tools. Uh, and I'm also going to add to that, inshallah. So, and at the end, we're going to reflect and I'm going to, you know, look at your questions and, and comments and respond to all that. Okay, so Harma uh, says um, writing actually is uh, one of the skills, uh, I think I missed the word, one of the skills that teachers and learners seem most reluctant to focus on because it requires them to make special efforts. Uh, writing as as a skill does involve a lot of um, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, um, a good uh, level of language competence, um, a good knowledge of uh, language and grammar, the type of genre, text structure. So a lot of things are at play when, when it comes to writing, and maybe that is that is that is the actually the the actual fact that makes writing a, a challenging. Um, skill to learn and practice with, with the students. So we're, we're going we're gonna to look at uh, the, the, the nature um, of writing itself. It, it, it requires, when it comes to writing, it requires a certain structure. So each and every text <clears throat> has organized in a certain way in terms of sentences, in terms of the choice of words, in terms of how we order our thoughts, in terms of which paragraph comes first, which paragraph comes last, etc., etc. So structuring the text itself uh, might be a concept and might be a practice that the students are not aware of and they need some training on. And sometimes the ideas can be challenging because the, uh, sometimes they they run off uh, they run out of ideas. Sometimes they they don't have enough information or they don't have adequate knowledge about a certain topic. And so when we ask them to write about that particular topic, uh, it, it becomes a challenge. It becomes difficult for them. Also, coherence is something that is um, required in good writing. Uh, the ideas should stick together. There should be some kind of flow. Uh, it should be writing should be uh, made easy for the readers to uh, read and, and, and understand. Uh, the choice of style itself, depending on the topic, depending on the level, depending on the audience. So uh, the, sometimes the students do not have an understanding of um, the, the kind of style that they have to choose, or uh, they don't uh, have, uh, they don't know, they don't know, they don't have like good understanding or or adequate understanding about the degree of formality required for for a particular text. Um, grammar and vocab are also very important for writing and also for writing uh, students should be able to know and, and practice paraphrasing uh, obviously to avoid plagiarism and also because it's a very important skill for academic writing. Yeah, so paraphrasing is, is, a, is a very important skill for writing and it's very Im important in academic writing and especially when it comes to academic context like, um, like university context. So the structure, as we spoke about, the structure of writing itself, um, how should it be structured? 
depending on the topic and depending on the audience and depending on the level of the students. Also, punctuation and capital capitalization uh, do pose um, a, a big uh, source of challenge because sometimes students do not have um, they don't have understanding of why do they have to write to, to put capital letters and, and full stops, etc. Um, also, knowledge of the genre itself, like for example, descriptive writing is different from narrating, narrative writing is different from argumentative writing. Each one of them has its own uh, set of tools to follow, each one of them has to be structured in a certain way, each one of them has its own choice of vocab and grammar, etc. So um, all these are, um, as, we said, as we said, our play when it comes to academic writing and the students should be trained uh, on these skills and many more skills when it comes to academic writing. Um, actually, this list, of course, does not include everything. There are also um, like the uh, um, thinking of the audience at the same time and having the writer's stance. I mean, having a writer's stance um, is, is something that uh, students have to practice with argumentative writing and they should be able to be trained on that, to know it and practice it. Um, so, um, as such, there are a lot of sources of, of challenge, definitely when it comes to teaching um, writing and learning writing. Uh, the, 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 the nature of the written texts are sort of multimodal, meaning uh, there are many things at play, as we have mentioned. Um, the students have to uh, know how to uh, generate ideas. Uh, the students have to have to know how to um, outline their own writing. Uh, they have to know where to put different ideas, uh, how to sort of uh, have divided paragraphs, different paragraphs. Uh, and they should also uh, know how to structure their ideas. I mean, which ideas should be at the introduction and which ideas should be in the main body of the text and which ideas should be at the end. And how to signpost all that. Even signposting language is also something that is really important for coherence and for the flow of, of writing. Uh, sometimes students uh, do not get enough training. They don't get enough training. Uh, sometimes we, for example, we sort of, uh, when it comes to writing and, and on Blackboard, for example, we use Blackboard as a platform for uh, some um, coursework tasks. And we tend to sort of penalize the students if the uh, plagiarism uh, rate exceeds 25%. We penalize them that without without having sort of um, introduced the idea, without having trained them on how to sort of avoid all that. I think it would be only fair to sort of train them and teach them on how to avoid plagiarism using tools like paraphrasing and and uh, and how to use alternative words. Uh, to avoid plagiarism is sort of just copying from sources without having to think about that. Uh, so I think training and tuition is really important in this aspect. Uh, also, students do not have like um, literacy as well as Dr. Wa. Students do not have a um, full and adequate understanding and conception of what genre means. Uh, when it comes to writing, there are different genres. We do tell them this is uh, descriptive writing and you have to use a lot of um, adjectives to describe a place, for example. And uh, But we don't tell them like this is uh, one of the genres of writing because they are also storytelling, they are narrative, they are argumentative writing. So there are different genres. And as we said, I mean, each, each genre has its own structure and has its own choice, has, has its own choice of words, uh, etc. Uh, obviously, according to Swells, who, who actually came up with the practice of genre as a very important aspect of academic writing, um, genre has uh, certain moves, meaning like each and every part. If I put this certain word in this particular place, it does communicate. It does have a communicative purpose. So each and everything falls into a particular place because it does serve at a particular communicative purpose. That's according to Swells. So um, if we train the students like that, I mean, in this systematic uh, way, I think it would be easy for them to know uh, and understand the concept of genre. And, and because this is something that is going to be uh, in their academic life in the future, later on when they are 
writing different assignments for the coursework when they go to their own departments, they will have um, they will have to know uh, what an assignment looks like and what, for example, an argumentative article look like and what a, what a, what a, a medical article should look like. Um, this is something that is uh, they'll have to do in the future uh, when they are studying for their own degrees and when they are when they graduate and, and, and practicing their own fields. Uh, the language competence is a big thing, definitely. Uh, you know, the knowledge of grammar, the knowledge of vocabulary are very important. Um, I always tell my students, grammar is not just about knowing the rules. Grammar is there to communicate certain ideas. Uh, obviously, if I say I went shopping yesterday, is different from saying I go shopping all at weekends. So, um, so it it is it's about saying what we want to say. So, grammar gives gives meaning to what we want to say. Yeah. Uh, um, Okay, so, so somebody said, talking about the slides, if asking if they are moving or not. Okay, so another another source of challenge is copying, unsolicited copying, I call it. And unsolicited copying meaning they, they just copy without without thinking about, without like, when we talk about critical thinking, uh, when we talk about critical thinking, one of them, one of the major critical thinking skills is evaluation, evaluation of information. Uh, knowing what information is relevant to what I want to write about and what information is not. That's that's the one I'm talking about, Ahad, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, evaluation of information and knowing how relevant this information is, is to what I want to talk about. Not just copying for copying sake, not just taking information from somewhere else. Yeah, I do remember when I was doing my master's, um this this particular thing plagiarism was a, was a was a big talk actually everybody was talking about plagiarism and and uh, and somebody mentioned that in some cultures um that plagiarism is allowed obviously not in this culture but in some it's in some nations some nations do have a lot of respect for scholars and so they're thinking if they copy from this book or that book without having to reference, without, you know, that is like showing respect to this particular scholar. And, and so they don't consider it plagiarism. So probably that is an understanding, or maybe that is a feeling, or maybe that the students are just thinking like, you know, this is good writing and we can just use it without having to reference. But yes, they should know that plagiarism is an offense, it's an academic offense, and it should be avoided at all costs. Uh, yeah, that is what that is what what is meant by unsolicited copying. And also, we should train them on the practice, the literacy practice of uh, choosing what is relevant and what makes sense to all want to write about. So, um, uh, the, the, the actual this actual presentation is about combining fun to what we do inside the classroom to sort of uh, help the students with academic writing. Uh, actually, writing is a big challenge. We we know that. We realize it. We uh, recognize it uh, uh, as as teachers. Yeah, uh, ed, um, edutainment. Yeah, edutainment. It's actually in some literature, and I've referenced. Uh, edit edutainment is is a term uh, that was coined by this American illustrator. Peter Kalamnoto, if I can pronounce him rightly, uh, but it was encouraged to be used in uh, the field of education by John Dewey. Those who are uh, into reflection and literature about reflection will know this name, will know John Dewey. Uh, he's an educator and he's so much into, uh, who wrote a lot about reflection as, as a tool for professional development. So entertainment is, is, is an educational practice actually inside the classroom. Yes, I agree with you, Ahad. Yes, actually, um, Dowie is encouraging edutainment inside a classroom because it's sort of ma it, it can maximize students' excitement about learning. Learning will not be like that boring uh, one-way mode uh, of uh, information delivery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So students will have we will have fun. We will enjoy ourselves. Um, usually, as teachers, we 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 do that. We sometimes we we find our, ourselves like bouncing around inside the classroom like clowns. We do do that. We do role play. We think we clap. We we do a lot of um, 
funny things they have to say. Yeah. So there's no harm in having fun and enjoy learning at the same time. And and this is something that they would enjoy and, and like. And we know that it is productive and it, we know that it's constructive. Okay, so um yeah. Okay. So somebody's talking about uh, creative plagiarism and I, I'm not very clear what they mean by that. What, what I said is, I said unsolicited plagiarism, unsolicited solicited, uh, copying, which is just copying for copying's sake, because they have a lot of respect for the author and the scholar. All right, so coming back to edutainment, uh, we have a lot of ways, a lot of methods, a lot of tools that we can uh, use inside the classroom to sort of um, to sort of actualize uh, edutainment inside the classroom. We can have a lot of tools. We can actually, and 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 we as teachers know how to, I think we as teachers know how to do it. We can sort of create, we can take any task I think, uh, I think and turn it into something that is fun and nice and creative and enjoyable at the same time. I get you. Okay, so here I'm gonna suggest some hacks, some tools to uh, practice uh, edutainment inside the classroom. Okay, so these pictures, which I took from these websites, those pictures, I think, okay, so I'm, I'm starting with spelling and punctuation. Uh, why did I start with spelling and punctuation? Because even level four, most advanced students will make spelling mistakes and will make punctuation mistakes. And, and probably, probably, because they don't have understanding that even the smallest, tiniest, lit, the most little, <laughs> the least, sorry, uh, mistake, uh, spelling mistake can make a big difference in the meaning of a word. Probably they don't have that understanding. And so probably you see using funny pictures like this one. I don't know, these pictures, I think somebody put them on the internet for a purpose of not just laughing at them, probably to draw attention to certain messages, Probably, but I thought it would be nice to use these pictures inside inside the classroom, and I will hope my students will uh, get the joke in them. So, um, if we use such pictures, then we have a laugh over them. Uh, we look at them, we have a laugh over them, and probably after that, we can I can ask the students to sort of give me the actual and correct uh, spelling of these misspelled words. Uh, so obviously, once they see these words, obviously the meanings are very different. The meanings are very different. The spelling mistakes had uh, changed the meanings entirely. Uh, so this can also be, um, yeah, yes. This can also be a way of raising awareness that spelling is something that is major and is something that is big and even the least and smallest mistake can make a difference. Uh, yes, the second link. Okay, how can I do that? Okay, so. Right. Honestly, I don't know how to do that. Honestly, but I'm very happy to share my slides with you. Yeah, let me try that. Uh, because it's in presentation mode, I don't think it's doing it yet. So, but. Yes, I agree. Yeah, but I'm very happy to share my slides with you afterwards. Yeah, uh, yeah. Patience, uh, patience uh, should have been patience as the the the, the virtue of patience, of patience. And uh, obviously, the meaning is different now because of these small mistakes. Definitely, the meaning is is different. And in the second picture, the meaning has been altered changed, entirely changed, yeah? And because of the punctuation mistake in the third picture, um, somebody might think, like, if I, if I, if somebody comes to my home for lunch or dinner, and then I shout out saying, like, let's eat kids, they might think of me as uh, some kind of cannibal or something, you know, cannibalism, cannibalism in the 21st century, yeah? Right. Yes. Yes. So yes, I mean, even the you know those small small mistakes will, will will make a big difference. And this is just a way of raising awareness. It is just playing, trying to sort of um, uh, drawing their attention 
uh, to be more careful about spelling because sometimes it's just careless carelessness sometimes they would think like you know, um, it doesn't make a difference or they don't stop and, and that is why i do encourage my students a lot to um, go back and read what they have written because i tell them we all we all make mistakes even the best the expert writers make mistakes in writing uh, we tend to get carried away with our, our thoughts and ideas and we forget about small little things yeah Okay, so an, another uh, um, task that I wanted to share with you that I, and that I tried in my own classroom is freeze or freeze and pass or stop and pass. I would uh, put my students in small groups and this is really good for brain, uh, brainstorming ideas uh, because sometimes they will, a student might turn uh, around and, and say like, I don't have ideas about this particular topic. That's true, very much true, yes, and I guess that's that's true and um so i i would put them in a small group so i'll ask them to i'll give them a topic definitely i'll give them a top i'll give them small cards and each card has got a has got a topic at, at, at the top of it and, and the topics would be different the topics would be different yeah so i would, I would ask each group to come up with uh, some ideas and, and write down these ideas on the on the on the card and then i will tell them I will give them the instructions. I'll be very clear with the instructions. I'll tell them that you've got only two minutes to think of some ideas about this particular topic. And when I say stop or when I shout freeze, then you should put down your pen or pencil and pass the card on to the to the group that is sitting next to you. So um, as a group that is collaborative learning, definitely, they will be thinking together, two heads are better than one and they will be encouraged to think of uh, uh, some ideas and also it would be like competitive uh, it would be like competitive so and the interesting part of it is when they pass the cards on to the next group then the other group are going to read uh, their ideas and add to them and add to them so they're gonna they're gonna get inspired with their ideas with each other ideas it's like share of knowledge and share of ideas and also getting inspired uh, by each other's ideas uh, and so by the end of the task then we'll have a lot of ideas about different topics too and then if we ask them to write about these topics then they will not be stuck for ideas they will not be stuck for ideas yeah so um yeah it, it did work with me actually it did work with me but i um Another, uh, of course, incentive, you know, you know, like, well done, good job, you know, words like that would work a lot. Plus, I will give my groups names, like, you know, you, 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 you are diamonds and you have flowers and you are it's stars, etc. Sometimes I'll ask them to give, you know, to sort of come up uh, with names for their own groups. And they like that a lot. They like to, uh, uh, they like to come up with, uh, with names for their own groups, actually. They like to call them themselves fancy names, etc. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is a very simple drawing. And also the idea is really simple, actually. But um, it does take us places, actually, inside the classroom, when it comes to uh, paragraph structuring. When it comes to paragraph structuring. Um, we will explain that the paragraph should have a topic sentence, it should have a concluding sentence, it should have some supporting sentences and supporting ideas, etc., etc. Yes. So um, I, I will I will show this uh, particular uh, uh, drawing of a plane of a plane, and I'll tell them you know each and every plane should have a cockpit uh, sorry cock, uh, cockpit actually, and without a cock a cockpit uh, the plane wouldn't go anywhere where would it go without a cockpit and some pilot sitting in it yeah, and also so the cockpit is really important pretty much as much as important as a topic sentence. So if you don't have a topic sentence, you don't have a cockpit. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, and also uh, the tail is very important. The tail, without a tail, uh, an airplane can fly anyway, because the, the tail, I do explain to them, you know, from my little uh, navigational knowledge about airplanes, um, that uh, for a plane to stay, uh, stable and balanced in air, it should have a tail. So a tail is really important for any for any plane. So I, t I tell them if you don't have a concluding sentence, then your plane doesn't have a tail. Yeah, and then you must have the wings. 
what carries the plane in the air? What does carry the plane in the air? You should have the wings and you should have a cabin. Where are you going to sit? Yeah. So it's a very simple idea. It's a very simple um, drawing, but it does communicate the ideas of the importance of having a topic sentence, the structure of paragraphs, the structure of paragraphs. Because sometimes it's about conception. Sometimes it's about, sometimes it's about understanding. Sometimes it's about recognition of the importance of a certain literacy practice. It is just about that sometimes. So um, if we can um, use simple ideas, just simple ideas like this one, scribbles like this one, I think it will does it will take us places definitely. Yeah, I did try this in my classroom with my students, and every time somebody would make a mistake about topic sentence or supporting sentences, they have to be at least three supporting sentences. Um, if you have more supporting sentences, then you'll have the you'll have uh, you'll have to count the the wheels, the plane wheels, and the landing gear. You'll have to count that because because before without a land a landing gear, no plane can land at all. So it just stay there. Yeah, I think. And then if you have more than that, you'll have to count the seats as well inside the cabin. I think. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, just simple ideas, but they can be creative and they can do a great job inside the classroom. They can do a great job inside the classroom. Yeah, okay. So Dr. Allah did uh, mention that our, our students, our, our classrooms are full of Gen Z, Generation Z. They are, they have seen technology since birth. Those, those guys are not like us. You know, we, we are digital immigrants. They are digital natives. They are not like us. They have seen technology since, you know, from day one. And they have a tendency of relying on technology for each and everything in their life. They are tech savvy. That's right, yes. That's right. For each and everything in their life, they rely on technology. And they are very visual because those eyes are glued to the, you know, to their mobile phone screens and, and iPad screens all the, all the, all the day long. So they are they are highly visual, and they use texts, which is the language that is the language of texting, which is like a sh shorthand language. And then this this actually this actually this works against them using the texts lang uh, texts language uh, is something that works uh, against them because. They when we ask them to write academically, then you know we'll have problems. We'll have problems because when you know the spelling and the grammar and the punctuation, all these you know practices, literacy practices are not known to them. So um, they are used to certain kind of me, uh, medium of communication when it comes to writing, and they are used to certain type and level of language. So when we ask them to write in an academic way, then that is a big uh, problem. So because of they are uh, Gen Z, we'll have to sort of think of ways, creative ways of using uh, digital tools to help them out. So <clears throat> the technical applications that I'm going to share with you today are Wordle and Padlet. And they are not new, obviously, but I'm, I'm sure many of you will know them and they have practiced them and they've used them in the classrooms. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They, they do, right? I'm going to. That's true. I, it, it is just a big, it is something that's sad. Sometimes you get students who speak like perfect English. They speak like brilliant English. But when it comes to writing, it's an entirely different story. And it just breaks my heart. It does break my heart because somebody with, with such advanced English, they use the language of movies. They use, they use really good English, actually, when they speak. And they are so fluent. But when it comes to writing, it's an entirely different thing. So it, it is heartbreaking, actually. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Wordle. I'm going to suggest a way of how to use uh, Wordle. Uh, Grammarly, yes. Yeah, Grammarly is really great. Yeah. But yeah, Grammarly, I think, is, is great. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But we want them to sort of practice. We want them to, to sort of uh, practice this writing, you know, this writing tasks. OK, so. Um, Wordle would look like this. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Wordle. Uh, of course, you will ask them for a word in a context. I'm going to share with you a task in a minute. 
and it would look like this. The screen will look like this. Okay, so there's a small plus sign at the top or uh, or icon at the top, which, you know, when you sort of press on that, uh, it's going to ask you for your own word. So it does stimulate critical thinking, yes. Because obviously, you're going to give them, obviously, when you ask them for a word to provide a word, uh, you have to give them a context, definitely. You'll have to give them a context. Yeah, so something like this. Um, actually, just a minute. Yeah, I mean, if 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 the letter is part of your word, then it's going to show them green. If the letter is part of your word, sorry, if the letter is part of your word and it is in the right place, it's going to show them green. If the letter is part of your word but it's not in the right place, it's going to show them that's why they make a mistake. It's going to show them um, yellow. But if the letter is in grey, then that is not part of the word at all. So that is, you know, if if somebody's not familiar with the how well it works, then we can explain that inside the classroom. Yeah, I think it is really helpful. It's really helpful. I've got a task for you then, if you have got your mobile phones ready, um, if you can find the word that I've put on my word for you, it starts, I'm going to give you a hint, it starts with a, a little T. You did? Riyadh. Yeah. They will enjoy it, definitely, yes. So what's my word? Have you got it yet? Starts with a T. It's not. Uh, we just count the letters and then I can tell you. It's a, it's a word of eight letters. Starts with a T. Oh, it's not working? Word is not working? Uh, okay. I thought of teachers. Yeah, I know they got it. Teachers. The word is teachers, actually. Yeah? Thank you, Neda. Okay, so, um, and uh, I think we all, uh, we, we are all familiar with this book. It's Unlock, Listening and Speaking, uh, Level 2. Um, at the end of, and, and this happens also with the reading and writing book, at the end of each and every unit, you get a list of words, and those words are, are supposedly um, covered, actually, in that particular unit. The words are covered. And um, I, I couldn't think of, the, of um, a, a pedagogy. Logical uh, rationale. Why do they have the list of words at the end of the unit? But I, I sort of, I thought as a teacher, I thought of how to sort of utilize these words to sort of remind my students of how to use them and their meanings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and as a means of assessment as well. I mean, how much of these, how many of these words they have learned, not just learned, uh, in terms of how you know, much of of, um, of uh, meaning have they learned about these words and how they, can they learn, use them in sentences, etc., etc. So um, I, I, I thought of, you know, just choosing randomly a few words and maybe use Wordle uh, and, and uh, use, you know, give them sentences with gaps and use Wordle with them so that they can get to the words that I mean. So it will sort of reinforce the learning of these particular words, it will remind them of those words and their usage, which is most important, uh, not just the meaning, how to use these words as well, and the context in which these words were used in, in this particular unit. So um, from this uh, particular list, I've got, a, I've got a word in this gap. As teachers, obviously, we'll just work it out, I think, without having to scan the QR, uh, QR code and use word. But um, if you wish to scan the QR, uh, QR uh, sorry, QR code and get to the Wordle to work it out, that's make um, money. Yeah. yeah, make profit. Sorry for the Hello? interrupt. Just two more minutes. Yeah, apologies. I have just... talking to me. Yeah, uh, you have two more minutes. Yeah, so thank you so thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, profit is the word. Profit is the word, and and the good thing is we provided them with uh, with a context. 
Okay, so Padlet. Padlet is actually it's a big fun. But Padlet is is a, is a big fun because it gives them autonomy. It gives them um, it gives them an opportunity to. Um, this is my Padlet. If I want to scan the the code and I get to my Padlet um, with my students, I have given them different uh, topics to write about. They can Padlet gives them an opportunity to be linked to the internet and choose maybe pictures. Uh, choose uh, some content to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we have to be careful about the choices uh, because the internet is a big thing, and they they can just choose anything from there. So we have to make sure that everything is appropriate, and they are playing by uh, our rules. But Padlet is really a good tool because they can. It gives a chance for collaborative learning, and they can add to each other's information. They can be the uh, each other for me as a teacher is a tool for diagnosis, diagnosing their weaknesses, how much they've learned, how much do I need to work on, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, if uh, using those, um, I think um, the, the pedagogical benefits of these tools to me were you know, they gave a good platforms for collaborative learning, they were engaging, uh, there were platforms and opportunities to share knowledge and ideas, they were fun and competitive. Everybody would look at what the others have done and try to, you know, do better than them, etc. And, and they are good for different writing genres, especially Padlet. Padlet is, you know, if you're uh, if you've got narrative writing, they can go and get some stories. If you have, if, if you've got descriptive uh, writing, then they can go get some pictures. They can get some uh, adjectives to describe a place or or something from the from the internet, etc. So um, yeah, that's all from me. These are my references. Thank you so much.